this is an Archer screencast for the Reveal application. Reveal is a performance analysis tool supported by Cray that guides you in improving the performance of a Cray compiled application code. Specifically, Reveal will analyse the loops within your code and identify which ones are less than fully optimised and why. In addition, Reveal can gather performance statistics that rank the loops according to length of execution time thereby showing you the best places in the source code to apply optimizations. An overview of Reveal can be found in this Cray document using Cray performance measurement and analysis tools. Alternatively, uh, there is a Cray Reveal webinar that's available online uh, that gives a much more detailed review of the Reveal tool. The purpose of this screencast, however, is to simply give a straightforward example of how a researcher might run Reveal with their MPI application code and thereby show how to make the code run faster and also how to add parallelism by introducing OpenMP directives. Now, My example MPI code that I'm using for the purposes of this screencast is called Layer3D. Uh, it's a three-dimensional Lagrangian remap code for magnetohydrodynamic simulations. That's what MHD stands for. It's open source and uh, it can be downloaded from this CCP Forge website that's hosted at Warwick University. Now, um, what Lagrangian remap means is um, the code is, it simulates a magnetized plasma as a single fluid, and at every time step, the grid moves with the plasma. Um, the plasma properties are updated and then remapped back to the original fixed Eulerian grid and then the simulation moves on to the next time step. Th this is what is meant by Lagrangian remap. In this screencast I will actually be using a customized version of layer 3D. It was used to generate the results for this academic paper. The actual simulation discussed here is of a perturbed magnetic flux tube and these are the modelled magnetohydrodynamic equations. So we have a, a force equation which is the second one and that has various terms such as a pressure force and also a Lorentz force. And then we have the induction equation which just tells us how the magnetic field changes with time and that will have a resistivity term on the right here, it's uh, indicated by eta. So now that uh, I've just introduced briefly as possible the MPI application code, um, I'll now move on with the screencast. The reveal application itself, we will run it on one of the logging nodes of the Archer machine. So I'm going to use an SSH agent to set up my Archer session, first of all. And to do that, I had to specify a config file. So the host I'm using is Archer and because Reveal uses a graphical user interface I need to have set the forward x11 and forward x11 trusted options so that that user interface will display within my Archer session window. So those uh, two options are basically the equivalent of the dash xy options uh, that you might use on the command line when running the ssh command. So I'm going to log into Archer now. And the layer 3D source code I've set up on slash work. Uh, there it is. Um, so I should show you my module environment basically just the default so I have the Cray programming environment loaded and in order to run reveal I need to first load the perf tools module uh, whoops module load there we go so I have version 6.2.2 um, so perf tools is also required for a couple of other utilities that I'll use, uh, pat build and pat report. So what Reveal um, 
what you need to do first of all to use reveal is to compile your source code in various ways um, the first way is to generate a program library so that's uh, this option here dash h pl equals layer 3 d dot pl um, which is just the name of the folder that will contain the library and the library is basically a set of analysis files uh, for each source code file and it tells me where optimizations have been applied and where optimizations could not be applied there's also another option this dash h profile generate and I'll be using that to prepare an executable that when instrumented will generate loop performance statistics but first I'll compile the code so to generate the uh, program library clean make option equals reveal prog lip okay so this will take uh, a minute or two to compile um, but when it's done so we can then run reveal um, pass it the program library uh, and then it will basically provide us show us the source code but the source code will be annotated uh, to tell us where vectorizations couldn't take place Okay, we're at the linking stage. This shouldn't be much longer. Great. So there's the program library. And we can look inside and see that we have a number of files for every source code file. You saw when it compiled that we were compiling xremap and yremap and so on. So each of these files basically contains a different set of analysis of the source code. Right, so we can run reveal. I'll enlarge this window. Now the main application file in layer 3D where the simulation starts is in layer 3D.f90 and I'll scroll down to uh, the main application loop so each iteration is one time step in the simulation <coughs> and you notice on the left hand side there is a column of annotations character annotations L stands for loop and exclamation mark I means that this particular call couldn't be inlined um, but we're going to focus on the main function within this loop which is the Lagrangian step which is where when the plasma uh, was wh when the grid moves with the plasma um, so that's defined in this source code file Lagrange.f90 and then this function in turn calls the predictor corrector step and you'll see as we scroll down here uh, we've got some more character annotations and a useful feature from the help menu is something called the loop mark legend which basically 
brings up all of the annotations and you can quickly find out what a particular letter means. It's a useful feature. But I'm going to scroll down to a particular part of this uh, subroutine um, which is here. Now this is a, a set of nested loops, one for each dimension. And you can see in the info window it tells me that a particular loop couldn't be vectorized because of a better candidate was found at line 249 but when we go to line 249 that says that this loop in the x-dimension now couldn't be vectorized because of a, of a potential hazard in conditional code on line 475. So this may be an improvement we can make right away and uh, make the code run faster. So what does this, uh, this set of nested loops what does it do? Uh, so it, it's, it works out the, the terms in the MHD force equation. So we have the pressure force here. Uh, it's been calculated. And we scroll down further. Um, there are the viscosity force. Now we're working out the currents, Jx, Jy, Jz, and that's in preparation for working out the Lorentz forces. Now this potential hazard was at line 475 and here it is. Here, here's the conditional code that's preventing the vectorization. Now these terms here, W1 and W2, what those are are basically uh, the kinetic energy for a particular cell. So we have the velocity squared multiplied by some mass term. So what this uh, set of nested loops does is, is it basically traverses the entire grid um, in calculating the, the, the force terms and also working out how the kinetic energy changes uh, over the time step. And that's what that, that um, subtraction does, W2 minus W1. But if a cell intersects a boundary, and what that means is that the boundary runs through the centre of the cell, so half of the cell is in the grid, half is outside, we need to divide the kinetic energy by a factor of two because actually only half of the mass in, in the cell is actually within the grid. And this code is quite easy to refactor actually to remove the uh, expressions for W1 and W2 and take them outside of the conditional statement. Um, but before I do that, um, we'll run the code as is in order to produce uh, a baseline loop performance. Okay, so now we're going to close the reveal application and then recompile the layer 3D source code a second time. Uh, but this time uh, we'll compile it with the prof underscore uh, gen option and so I just do a make clean so I said pro prof underscore gen what I meant was profile underscore generate that's the dash h option so what we're doing is uh, was before we compiled the code to produce a program library now we're compiling the code so that when the executable is instrumented will also capture all of the loop performance statistics. So that means after this there will be an additional step where I'll have to use pat build to instrument the generated exe. Okay, nearly finished. So there it is. So um, go into the bin directory 
that's where the executable was written to and we can run pat build with two options a W and a V. The W enables tracing so that when the app executes it can follow which loops were called and thereby collect the runtime performance data and the V just uh, indicates verbose output. So this will take a few seconds and at the end it just outputs uh, a summary of the memory used. And there we go. So now that we have an instrumented exe, the Alaire 3D plus PAT, we're ready to submit the job and then we could get the baseline data for the loop performance. And the job will be submitted using a script such as this one. So here I've just um, selected three nodes um, and I'm using uh, only 64 so not all the, the nodes aren't fully utilized and notice that I'm using the instrumented exe on the AP run command line. Now I've already submitted this job and obtained the, the output data. That's where I'm going to go now. Um, so two um, files were produced, standard output and standard error. I'll show you what's in the standard error one. Uh, it's not actually an error, it's just uh, a message from Craypat that tells us that the experiment data file was created. And the output file itself, which contains actual output from layer 3D, um, that, that gives us the, the runtime. So that's uh, nearly 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, and when we um, go back to that, that um, nested loop structure that I pointed out, that couldn't be vectorized because of the potential hazard. Once that's corrected, then we should see that runtime come down. <coughs> so we have the experiment data file, um, .xf file. Uh, and in order to run that through reveal, we first need to run pat report and we run it just like so that uh, quite a bit of output is generated so we'll just send that to a text file there we go and we can have a look inside there so just go to the top and we've got the basic information the number of calls that were, were used, 64, and we should get to a table, so that breaks down uh, the runtime according to name of subroutine. And then we scroll a bit further down, we have the table for all the various loops within the source code. So right at the very top we've got the main application loop, where most of the time is spent, that's not surprising. Um, but then we can see which loops that are called from within the um, the internals of layer 3D, such as the Lagrangian step. So we've got this loop predictor corrector step. So that's from that's actually yeah that that's on line 245 to 247 249, and those are the loops that we were looking at earlier. So we can see that those are fairly expensive um, compared to the other loops at least, and so it would be a good place to, to try and do some work and. Uh, try and change the code so that those loops can be vectorized. And that's something that I've already done. And um, I can just show you in, in this code. And that's in here. So these are the the loops that I, I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so before the W2 and W1 variables were being set up inside these conditional statements and I've added a, an extra variable called BD underscore count which is just a, a boundary count which counts the number of boundaries that a particular cell intersects and then uses that, that value to work out how much which factor should be used to reduce the kinetic energy. And so now that W2 and W1 have been moved outside those conditional statements, this code should be uh, vectorizable. Uh, the, the loops, rather, should be vectorizable. And 
I'll just do a bit of clean up in, in here I've already done some some work in that um, I've, I've run the code with this refactored uh, uh, loop so that it, it can be vectorized and so I then also submitted the job with the the prof gen option uh, used to compile the code so we can see what the uh, improvement in runtime was. I'll just look in this layer 3D output file. And you can see it's come down to around 15 minutes, whereas before it was 16 minutes and 50 seconds. So that's around about a 10% improvement. Um, so now, uh, the various, so what I've done here with this, ref with this new version of layer, layer 3D, this slightly new version, is that I created a program library and I also then went ahead and ran it with uh, the profile generate option on and then created the experiment data file, this .xf then did a pat report to get the .ap2 file and now we can have a look at those within reveal and we can just pass everything on the, on the command line um, whereas before I, I, I loaded the performance data from within reveal from using a, a file uh, menu option from the file menu so there we go we've already got the loop performance data loaded and if we look at where the loops where the set of nested loops the ones that work out the terms in the force equation here they are and you can see that the character annotations on the left hand side have changed a little bit um, so now the the loops have been vectorized and there's an additional message I just enlarge the window so you can see it uh, also just show you that this is indeed the refactored code there you go with the, the boundary counter Um, so what that's saying, the, the little red circle, which gives a warning, um, it's, it's saying uh, due to the lack of hardware resource basically, not all of the vector registers required um, could actually, there wasn't a sufficient number of them within on the hardware, so five of them had to be forced to memory. Uh, it might be possible to change that by making the loop less complex by splitting it up, but then you would have um, more than one loop when previously you, you, you had one so that would take longer to run anyway but looking on the left hand side we can see that the runtime for that loop has definitely come down and then also for the outer loops as well um, it's around about 37 seconds whereas before it was around I think it was almost twice that it was around 70 seconds last part of this screencast we will look at how to add OpenMP directives so from within reveal we'll run a scoping tool and here we are under the view menu and we'll decide that we'll add all loops initially but then we'll apply a filter so we're only interested in those loops that take more than 20 seconds to execute we've applied the filter there so just looking at which loops have been selected from within the logaran.f90 source code file then we can start the scoping so what scoping means is basically looking uh, at uh, where there are opportunities for using OpenMP and Reveal goes further and, and tells you um, or gives you its best advice as to which OpenMP directives to use so you'll, you'll notice that a few things have changed um, in this window here we've got some icons going along the, the right um, for each of the of the loops um, where we have a, a red circle that means that OpenMP directives couldn't be applied or Reveal couldn't find a way to do it um, where we have a green square that means Reveal had no no problem in, in finding the deciding the, the OpenMP directives to put in and where we have 
a green square with an orange triangle, that means that yes, Reveal could add um, OpenMP directives, but it also has some s s some warnings um, uh, to to show as well. So we can have a look at uh, at some of these, and in this particular area, yeah. So at the loop at this line number uh, nine well nine five nine four six. Um, we can add OpenMP directives, and this is within the ETA underscore calc subroutine. And what and what ETA is is basically the resistivity, um, which is being calculated in this subroutine for every cell over the grid. Um, I should show you the other window, which is the um, the, the OpenMP scoping window, and that and the content of that window will will change as you as you select um, various loops. So here we see you have lots of, of errors. You couldn't find the set of um, OpenMP directives that would work. Um, but when we go back to the loop within the ETA-Calc subroutine, it, it gives a, a suggestion, which we can see when we click on the show directive, the option. And we can see here it is. And um, we can either copy it and paste it into our source code later, or we can just insert the open in MP directives right away which is what we've done here and then um, at this point reveal has only saved it to a local copy uh, to its own copy of the source code to actually make sure it's in the the source code file proper we click on save and then select yes so it's it's in there and we can then close re reveal and just double check that it has found its way there and we can go there it is those are the the um, open MP directories that we've just added now we can compile this code um, uh, without using instrumentation actually which I've already done uh, and then when we, we we run it should execute successfully and when we have a look at the runtime I should also first just show you that the it was necessary also to change the submission script um, because we're using OpenMP so we have more than one thread per MPI process for example so now um, I've specified 64 MPI processes uh, that each have three th threads 64 times 3 is the same as 8 times 8 times 3 which equals 24 times 8 so we have fully utilized nodes and let's look at the outputs see what they run and the runtime has, has come down by a lot now um, so with the refactor code it's around 15 minutes it's now come down to almost nine minutes um, well that's not surprising we're using more hardware resources and also this executable is uh, uninstrumented but this just just shows that reveal can be used to almost automatically choose the open MP directives that you can use for the loops in your code and thereby um, reduce the runtime thank you for listening uh, this is the end of the screencast